I go out with my friends so you get mad at me. So now I take you along. You and actually you get... like these yeah. people? I grew up with those guys. You got bigger. None of you grew up. Just get me a cab. 2 a.m.? We have to walk over the avenue. There's a gypsy. I know how to handle this. Hey, pal. Nine millimeter to the head, a little all over the car. We found this in a puddle on the back seat. Well, you got the shell casing. How about the slug? They're digging it out of the dash, along with half this guy's brains. Chauffeur license. Daniel Johnson, 111 West 114th Street. That's it for ID. Wallet's gone and cash box is empty. I'm gonna hold on to this. So how long has he been dead? The way the blood settled about four hours, Tom. It's around midnight. Hell of a way to greet the new day, right? Anything in there? Well, that guy wasn't. The bartender says he would have remembered a black customer. Are those the two kids that found the body? Yeah. Hiya. How you doing? You all right? Uh, yeah. Sandy's a little shook up. Yeah. When you came out, did you see anybody at all out here on the street? No, no one. All right, now, did either one of you touch that cab? Well, I knocked on the window. Tommy opened the front door. OK, if you think of anything. These radio cars. I pick up fares that yellow cabs won't. Hey, Logan. Found this stuck in a visor. Daniel Johnson, Corporal, awarded the Purple Heart. Desert Storm. Compared to this, driving across the sand in Kuwait must have been a piece of cake. Johnson's the 43rd cabbie killed in the last 12 months. These guys have shorter lifespans than fruit flies. Especially the gypsies. This one leaves behind a wife and a six-year-old son. You talked to the driver's last fare? Yeah, 69-year-old lady. Takes her home from her bingo game every Monday night. That was at 10, and the dispatcher said he was headed home after that. He was killed around midnight? What was he doing for two hours? Ricky, honey. Go in Mama's room. You can watch cartoons. Come on. Come on, Rick. We're just going to talk to your mom for a couple of minutes, OK? Yes, please. OK. I told him his father's on a trip. Do you ever catch any of these robbers? Well, that would depend on the circumstances of the robber. What do you mean? Well, for instance, the dispatcher said your husband quit work at 10 PM. So? Well, we were wondering, do you have any idea what he might have been doing at midnight? Same thing he was always doing. It's working. Radio cars aren't supposed to pick up street fares. But they do, huh? I uh, opened a restaurant a year ago. It's not making any money yet. You know, so Danny, we needed every dime he could bring in. OK. Now, could you describe any valuables he had with him? There's a chance that they'll turn up. They said you'd need this. Um, his watch, ring, credit cards, it's all there. Thank you. Cab robbery, huh? That narrows it down to anybody who went out last night. Yeah, if it was a cab robbery. Well, you heard her. They needed the money, he was working. He was driving the company car around for a couple of hours late at night. What he was doing and what he told the wife are not necessarily the same thing. He told me he was going home. His wife said he was picking up fares. The drill sergeant <laughs> says a lot of things. She called her yesterday during Johnson's break and bit his head off. Maybe he didn't want to go home. So the Johnsons weren't getting along? Money problems. The guy was always nosing around for an advance. OK, so to make ends meet, he picks up a couple of fares after his shift is over. Uh, we don't do street fares. Radio calls only. Look, Brian, we are not the Hack Bureau. All we want to know is what Danny Johnson was doing last night. I wanted to help the guy out. I told him, keep the car, earn what you can. It's your license. Isn't that a little dangerous? Danny knew the risk. Two months ago, some punk pulls a gun on him, and by some miracle, the cop catches him, and he gets off for two years for attempted robbery. We'll talk to the governor. 